is going to be about two subjects and depending on how you take it it will be something you object to toy guns cap guns specifically and real guns from the oldy days this is a kit a reproduction of a cap and ball pistol it's a bunch of parts that you would conceivably have to put together and this is the cylinder for a six shot revolver and these are the little screwing objects that you use so that you can put a cap gun type cap or a percussion cap on it to ignite the powder and drive a bullet out. Let's uh, examine this a little more thoroughly. This is what it looks like close up after they've been put in. And you can literally imagine, because there's a hole in the middle of it, if you were to put a cap gun cap on it, a big red, you know, the red one off the, off the little eight shot ring caps you get? Yeah, it would actually fire. In fact, people do that. You put in your pyrodex or whatever propellant, uh, somebody might be using cornflakes in this case. <laughs> You never know. And then the next stage is this one where you put the projectile in. So what happens if you don't put the projectile and powder in? Well, it's just a cap gun, literally a percussion cap gun. That's what it's based on. That's what it looks like when you ram them in. And this was done with a particular tool to get them jammed in. Now, this again is the cap gun. Now, all that there is different here is instead of the hole being in the center of, uh, of the little indent sticking up, it's uh it's on the edge of it because it's fitted in there more loosely and yeah this would actually fire in fact some cap guns have been used as improvised weapons but the point i'm making here is what is that little thing in the middle that's called an anvil when you do it that way uh many cartridges bullets you know ammunition that is a cartridge that is a a specific loading of propellant a projectile the bullet and the primer, in this case, it, would, it could even be literally the same cap, is put into a cartridge. And then the cartridge goes into the cylinder rather than you assembling anything in the cylinder. That's the difference between manually loading these and having factory-issued ammunition or munitions. It goes together like that in a ring. But uh, I've done this experiment where I drilled a hole through all of those and actually made a little very tiny projectile based weapon it would fire BBs but I was able to do it now I'm not advising you do that because in no way shape or form do you want to do this <laughs> it's it, it's already very dangerous and difficult if you don't have a proper gun you could make one but don't do this that's why we have prepackaged ammunition so you don't have to worry about having a misfire a hang fire where you're sitting there for 30 seconds hoping it doesn't go off accidentally because it could be burning inside and uh, these are made out of aluminum or zinc or other pot metals and they blow up if you do that but anyway those are the actual caps the actual percussion caps and they're just metal versions of the plastic ones but I've seen people use the plastic ring caps you can buy their toy caps and be able to fire a black powder weapon because the diameters are almost identical so what you're looking at here is a little bit of history what happened is about the time some war broke out or whatever Companies started making toy guns to augment their money because all gun production had to go for wars or for defending the country or whatever. And they were allowed to sell toy guns, so why refit? They just used the same molds and dies. In case you can't tell when we do this, that literally is a cap gun cylinder. It's almost identical. You just plug the hole and put the holes in the outside. And also, uh, look up Boxer versus Burdan primer. It's literally a cup with primer in it it's almost the same thing it has an anvil inside of the cartridge inside of your you know nine millimeter or whatever a small pistol primer can be based on the same thing and basically again I've said this before black powder weapons are an example of you using something that just doesn't have ready-made ammunition you have to make the ammunition by doing your own hand loading of the entire gun either one shot or in this case six and again now we get this blurred line if you load up the cylinder and it easily pops out, there's even a belt you could get that would hold several of them. It's not a magazine. It acts like a six shot cartridge because it has a primer, this propellant and the bullet sitting there waiting, waiting to go off. It has all the components of having like, I don't know, six bullets glued to each other. And yeah, all anybody ever had to do after this point in some of these designs, they were able to get away with because they, the backs were a bit different. Obviously that's a bit different than a normal one that would take a bullet, you could modify these things to have it to be rechambered or sleeved to hold 
current issue ammunition. A lot of guns were converted to it because it's more reliable, because it can be made consistently and safely. And that's literally what happened. And you get the idea here that you're looking at basically a big six shot bullet. In fact, if you fired all of these, it would be, would it be a shotgun shell? And again, these black powder weapons are basically, you're hand loading a giant shotgun shell or pistol shell or rifle cartridge, and it's mounted to a handle with a trigger system on it. And here comes the funny question. If you made it to where you could just take a, let's say a 223 uh, rifle bullet and modify it to where it was made out of a thick layer of steel so you could get away with using it all by itself as a gun, if you strapped it to a handle, would it be legal? And by legal, I mean unrestricted, because again, if you make a muzzle loader, you can make it a 12 gauge shotgun if you want to. You don't have any of these restrictions you do with ammunition based guns. You don't have to do anything the way you would do for a pistol, rifle, or shotgun. At least, well, and not as many things. And again, this is a cap gun. They just took the molds and modified them to be able to fire just the percussion caps. And the ones that run tape, that's based on Maynard tape, which originally was copper tape, you know, the roll, the roll caps. Yeah, these are all based on reusing old technologies that have gone out of date and using them for toys. Because making a toy cap gun is a great way to use up old metal. And the thing is, uh, they could use recycled metal and make these and be perfectly adequate for it. And they could make money making toy guns, and it was fun. I played with toy guns when I was a kid, and BB guns are based on a similar design to a couple of other things. Hell, the Nerf gun is based on a, a design that involved something called a needle gun, which was for firing black powder. It was a, one of the first cartridge-type guns where it had the primer put up against the butt end of the, the bullet, and the rest of it was a hollow um, clod of gunpowder, and it would push a pin up through the middle and set it off and fire it in reverse. But it worked. Those are those are percussion caps, and you now use them in cap guns. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.